Hey everyone, so One Piece chapter 1008 just came out and this was a great chapter filled with a lot of content, starting off with downstairs. So let us all first celebrate that it was not Thomas Teapot. I was convinced when I saw that theory that it was Thomas Teapot that this is just it. The chapter is called Tanuki-san. Thomas Teapot is a Tanuki. <laughs> Tama is here. She brought her teapot. The teapot transformed into Odin. That's what we're seeing here and Oda is just messing with us. I've gotten so used to Oda messing with us in so many different ways that this is just, this was the first thing that I was just like, out of all of the options, Odin traveling through time, Conjuro, uh, Mr. Two, stuff like that. I was just like, like Katarina Devon, I was like, no, it's this teapot. But luckily it was not the teapot. It was something way more interesting. I won't say the teapot was the worst case scenario. I think the worst case scenario would have been if it was actually legitimately Odin because that opens up a whole new can of problems for what this arc is about and, and like what the point of certain things are, right? So we won't even discuss that because that didn't happen. No point in thinking about things that didn't happen. Instead, it was the best case scenario, which was it was Kanjuro. And I think a lot of people, when Kanjuro first revealed his, you know, drawing, the full extent of his drawing ability and that he wasn't a bad artist, he was actually a great artist, a lot of people did wonder, okay, is he ever going to draw Odin? Because we can see that he can draw, draw full copies of other characters, right? He can draw Shinobu, for example. So when that came into play, I think Odin was definitely on the menu for things that we really hoped that Kanjuro would draw at some point, just because of the effect that it would have on the scabbards. And we got to see that in full display here. I think this, nobody really, like, it, it's One Piece, so I don't know how many of us actually bought that Kanjuro was dead when, you know, he was supposedly killed off by Kiku uh, earlier on. Right, so I assume most of us did not buy that he was dead, but it was, you know, it was ambiguous enough that I put it in the category of like, okay, I'm not going to think about it. If he is dead, then it's a shame we didn't get to see the full extent of his abilities. I think this was probably the best way that Oda could have Kanjuro essentially, like the reveal that Kanjuro could, uh, came back to life, you know, instead of just popping up again. Not that the Orochi stuff was bad, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, instead of just having Kanjuro pop up again in front of the scabbards and be like, aha, time for round two or whatever. I think this was one of the most effective ways to uh, bring him back into the story because it was just a more interesting sort of reveal that, okay, confusing us first, that okay, it's Odin, then having this sort of back and forth, messing with the scabbards, and then all of that leading to, okay, it's Kondro, this is why he's such a deceptive, manipulative little guy. Uh, it just plays well into his character. It's the right way, I think, to bring him back. So I did enjoy the entire scene with uh, the Odin, the Odin drawing and the scabbards, largely because Ashura Doji, um, I, I would say that Ashura Doji is probably my favorite of the scabbards. It's gone back and forth, so forgive me if I've said somebody else in the past. Like there was a period of time I was like, you know, I've really come around to Kinemon. Kinemon's my favorite of the scabbards at this point, but I think that's partly just because as time has gone on, a lot of the scabbards, their, their amount of dialogue has gone up, gone down, stuff like that. So Ashura Doji, for me, he had the most interesting storyline for Act 2, right? But actually both Act 1 and Act 2 because he was a big feature in Act 1. So Ashura Doji to me, he was always the most interesting with the scabbards. I did, I guess the only thing I wished I'd seen more of was just more of him, like more of uh, him in Odin, both in Odin's backstory and seeing his shift um, and more of him, I guess, in Act 2 post joining up with the rest of the scabbards because I think once he joined up with the rest of the scabbards, he kind of did blend into the background a little more. So all that being said, he was initially upon like the early parts of his storylines, he was my favorite of the scabbards. So I'm glad to see that um, he was the one that was able to call out, this is an Odin. And we know he didn't sacrifice himself, but at least, you know, made the gesture, right? I'm saying he didn't sacrifice himself because this is what we've been burnt too many times on this, right? Like a bomb going off, like, it's a 50-50, right? Or not even a 50-50. Probably, if you count bomb deaths, what, Pell survived, Pedro died, but Perospero survived. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I think, I think he's probably fine, right? So, I mean, Pound's still alive. Stuff like that happens. So, it's one piece. We live with it. We move on. But uh, I do like the gesture. I do like that this scene was basically, uh, like, the chapter was called, you know, uh, Ashra Doji and his full title and everything like that. So uh, I do hope we get to see more of him after this. Uh, who is going to be the scabbard to take down Kanjo at the end of the day? Because Kanjo 
you know, himself is spelling out that I'm not going to survive till the end of this war. So the scabbards are on the hunt for him, at least is what it looks like. At the same time, Orochi is out and about, so I wonder if it is going to be some sort of mishmash of the scabbards. It's the scabbards versus Kanjiro plus Orochi, but uh, Fikuroku is also there. There's there's a matchup there that could happen, uh, some sort of ensemble battle. But Orochi, as far as we know, to this point, does not have combat abilities. And to that point, Orochi, the fact that he's alive should be a surprise to no one, right? But uh, I, I am a little surprised in the way that it, uh, it was revealed that he was alive. He was just like running about, um, just he's just out and about, he's just back. I thought that there would be some sort of scene where we see him like pop back up in, in Hydra form and you know, there's, there's some sort of menacing aura to all of this or something like that. But no, it looks like Orochi really is just, he's kind of, he's kind of a weenie. He's just not a very, he just doesn't seem like a very threatening character, but I do wonder what sort of wrench in the works like, what is his purpose as a sort of wrench in the works to everything else that's going on here, right? Like, how is he going, what is he bringing to the table by being back, other than just Oda not wanting to kill him, you know what I mean? So, that being said, um, the last point is probably Inurashi versus Jack in terms of, but it's tricky to me just because I had always imagined that Jack would be an enemy for... Inurashi and Nekomamushi. I guess that already happened up on the rooftop. Um, no, to be fair, I always thought that Jack would be an enemy for Luffy, right? I'm not going back on that. But I'm saying that, like, in the case that Luffy was not fighting him, I figured it would be Inurashi and Nekomamushi. So to me, it's just a little odd that it's in just Inurashi fighting Jack. You know what I mean? Like, it's just Inurashi fighting Jack. Um, because it, it's, to me, it's like both of these dukes have pretty much exactly equal, yeah, like exactly equal right or motivation to fight this guy. Both the Dukes have been portrayed, like they're basically two peas in a pod. They're a duo, that's that's just how it's felt for so long. So for Oda to randomly be like, I'm not, I'm not gonna say randomly because we have to see how it goes, but for Oda to be like, okay, it's gonna be this one, just this one versus Jack, I was just surprised. I thought it would be teamwork to, to, to defeat Jack. Not that I'm, I'm just surprised why it was Inurashi, not Nekomamushi. I would have been surprised if it was at Nekomamushi, not Inurashi. I guess Oda just was like, okay, I'm just going to pick one and that's going to be it. So I guess we'll have to wait and see um, what the purpose of that is. But it looks for, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it looks like Jack is Inurashi's fight. And that's basically what we're going to be getting. So um, I'm not like upset with it, but I do like Nekomamushi better. So I would have liked if Nekomamushi could have also been involved in the the actual fight to defeat jack because the one that we got on the rooftop was an off-screen fight it wasn't something that we actually got to see but then on the flip side that could also mean that nekomamushi is going to get to play a significant role in fighting kanjiro orochi even fikorokuju something along those lines so uh all that being said i'm still surprised that it's just inurashi versus jack to me it's like you could flip a coin and it could go to either inurashi or nekomamushi but we got inurashi so that's basically where it's at uh besides that I think the Momonosuke Yamato scene did, it bummed me out slightly because I had really liked the Momonosuke moment that we got last chapter. I thought that that was Momonosuke actually taking initiative on its own and choosing to transform into a dragon, into a dragon, right? That's what it felt like to me. Um, it felt like that was a moment of internal mo uh, motivation that was him deciding I'm going to do something about everything that's going on and transforming into a dragon. This chapter, we're back to square one, where basically it was like, oh no, that was an accident. That just, that's just something that happens when I get, uh, you know, emotionally worked up and everything. So, uh, the Momonosuke Yamato scene, uh, you know, it, it felt like a step, it felt like a fake step forward for me last chapter. That's nothing on like, that's obviously, I misread that, but th that's just what it felt like to me that last chapter, I was like, yes. Momonosuke finally doing something that was actually one of my favorite Momonosuke moments. And then this chapter was like, oh no, that wasn't, you met, you read that wrong. It wasn't actually like that. So it is what it is. What is really interesting is that Momonosuke, I think a lot of people are going to jump to observation hockey, but Momonosuke knows what's going on with uh, Luffy up top, right? Uh, to me, that's just voice of all things. So we know that Momonosuke has this ability from the Zo arc. We know that it is going to be very important for his character down the line. 
I still don't know the full extent of it because it's not just that he has the voice of all things, but he's able to command Zanisha, for example. I don't know if that's going to come into play whatsoever this arc, but probably at some point it's going to be important in the story. So with that in mind, I think that the fact that Momonosuke is able to hear how Luffy's doing right now, that's probably voice of all things. You could also make the argument that voice of all things is an extension of observation hockey. I think that is probably correct. I actually talked about that in my video on the branches of hockey and everything like that. So to me, it would make sense, but it's, I'm saying it's not, I don't think it's classical observation hockey. And that's what Momonosuke is using. I think it is voice of all things. I think it's very possible that Momo can, can sense everything that's going on in the Onigashima battle right now, which would be pretty cool. Uh, it, there's a lot of ways that you could run with that. I do still want to see Momonosuke like actively have some moment that makes him transform into a dragon and uh, do something with that ability because it's been talked about how strong that ability is, right? CP0 is hyping that up and everything like that. So let's wait and see. Uh, yeah, I mean, even on top of that, last chapter, CP0 is hyping up the dragon ability and then we got a moment where Momo turns into a dragon. I thought, yes, this is something that's happening off of this. And then it's like rewind back to kid form the very next chapter. So whatever. Up top, on the roof, I've seen some people say that they did not like the, the as people are calling it, the Kybrid form, the Kaido hybrid form. I like the Kaido hybrid form. I think it looks pretty good. Actually, it looks exactly like Luchi. Go, go back to Eni's lobby and look at Luchi's leopard transformation. It looks so similar. It's like exactly the same. Not exactly the same. You know what I mean? It's, it's the dragon version of Luchi's leopard form, but it, it's very, very visually similar. Uh, they both have this really long hair, uh, long hair, like, like cascading afro, if that makes sense as a description, but they've got this really long hair afro look. They're both kind of, uh, they've got claws, like, like, just look at it. Okay, that's, okay, let's, <laughs> that's a very poor way to make them sound similar. Let's say this. Okay, so both very long black hair, afro look, they're both got kind of like a, a not a slouch, but a little bit of a slouch, it feels like. They both got claws, scales, and spots seem similar. It's just, and their builds, generally their physiques, they look very, very visually similar. You could put those two, um, those two forms side by side, and it does look like Kaido is some sort of an upgraded version of Luchi. Uh, I just think that that's kind of interesting. So, you know, if we're in store for another Luffy versus Luchi-esque fight, I'm not complaining. That being said, I think uh, the whole double page spread, we got to include Big Mom too a whole double page spread of Kaido in his hybrid form and Big Mom, you know, both of them amped up and ready to go. I did think that looked pretty cool. I can understand why some people did not think Kaido's hybrid form looks that impressive, but for those of you who did not think Kaido's hybrid form looked that impressive, keep this in mind. We have most likely, most likely Devil Fruit Awakening coming around the corner as well, right? Kaido's crew, probably the Toby Ropo, I assume the commanders and Kaido himself, most likely their awakened zones. I would also assume that the forms we're seeing right now are not their awakened forms. I assume, right? I would assume that they've got, like these all seem like the standard forms you would expect. Whereas awakened forms, I would expect maybe something a little more. So I would guess that this is also not Kaido's final form, right? Not his final, final, like it's technically his final form and that this is the hybrid form, but his awakened hybrid form, if that is a thing, I'm betting it's a thing. You know, the last few opponents of, Luch of Luffy have had awakened devil fruits that they reveal partway through the fight, Doflamingo, Katakuri. I think Kaido is going to follow that trend. We've heard about awakened zones all the way back since it fell down. I do think that's around the corner. So get hyped for that, right? If you don't like Kaido's hybrid form, just keep waiting. We've got, a, we've got probably one more around the corner. And again, I like Kaido's hybrid form as is. I think it does look pretty good. So that, <laughs> although I've seen some funny tweets about it that I guess I just won't bring up here. Uh, that being said, uh, flip side is, I think I would have liked to have seen, because we, we get dropped back into the fight at a point where it sounds like we're told that the protagonists have been struggling against the Kaido Big Mom tag team, right? I would have liked to have seen that part of the fight. I feel like we skipped a beat in the fight because Last we saw, they the alliance was doing pretty fine. Like we were told that we were told this chapter that their attacks don't work on them. Last we saw, their attacks were working perfectly fine. It like last we saw, they were actually dealing damage to Kaido to the point that Kaido had to transform. Then it feels like 
Kaido and Big Mom got their own back against them and, you know, dealt out some hits. That's the alliance, like the protagonist had some struggle. And now we're at the point where, okay, now the alliance is trying to think, okay, how do we split them up? But it does feel like we skipped this middle part where we're actually shown, right now we're told, right, that, hey, they had some trouble, they struggled a little bit. It would have been nicer to have been shown that, okay, this is what Kaido and Big Mom working in tandem can do once they've actually gotten serious. So I do feel like we skipped that part where we got to see them actually getting serious. But again, for all we know, we're very early in the fight, so more stuff like that is going to happen. And hopefully the raid still fails, which means that in general, the... <laughs> <laughs> Which means that in general, uh, all of this uh, positivity that we're getting from the good guys, from Luffy and, you know, the good guy side and kind of the light tone that we're getting right now, that's going to be torn apart soon enough. So that's that's the hope. But for all we know, this is the final battle, in which case I do hope that Kaido and Big Mom turn it up and we actually get to see them turn it up um, instead of just being told about it. Besides that, we know where they're going to be getting split up, right? That seems like the next step in the fight. So... Fun possibilities of who's fighting who. Best guess. Okay, so Luffy versus Kaido. Uh, unless, actually, Oda might do it a way where he has actually Luffy pair off against Big Mom, weirdly enough, to start with. And have other people take on Kaido. And then have Luffy in tandem with somebody else. Maybe Luffy Kid, maybe Luffy Law, maybe Luffy Kid Animal. I don't know, something like that. Maybe Not Luffy Killer, right? I think we can assume it's not going to be Luffy and Killer, the dynamic duo. That seems like the oddest... <laughs> hottest team out of the bunch um yeah i think it's possible that we have luffy and someone versus big mom first then some other people versus kaido those people go down then luffy and luffy transitions over to kaido that's a possibility but if i had to go with gut reaction and say okay we're just gonna go with the most straightforward split ups i would say luffy and zoro versus kaido and then kid killer versus Big Mom, and then Law maybe playing both sides a little bit because his ability just lends itself to that, swapping stuff. I would love to see them kind of pair off and then the pairings still swap a lot if, let's say, Zoro's attacking Kaido here and then Law sees an opportunity, swap Zoro over to Big Mom and let Zoro get a hit on Big Mom or vice versa, something like that. Uh, I do think there's a lot of potential for stuff like that, but I don't think Oda... Oda doesn't generally have Law abuse his ability to that degree. would love to see him do that this fight, because this is the fight you would really want to do it. Uh, but we generally don't see Oda have Law abuse his ability to its fullest, that I think a lot of us believe it could be abused all the time. So, uh, if I had to guess, let's say Luffy, Zoro versus Kaido, Law in the middle, Kid, Killer versus Big Mom, and that's, you know, off the top of my head, that's my guess. So... That's all for this video. I will talk to you all next week.